In Ethiopia, new fighting has erupted in the Tigray region after a months-long ceasefire. Tigrayan officials accuse Ethiopia of launching a, quote, large-scale offensive today. Ethiopia claims Tigray's forces attacked first. In New York, U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres insisted that the fighting stop. I am deeply shocked and saddened by the news of the resumption of hostilities in Ethiopia. My strong appeal is for an immediate cessation of hostilities and for the resumption of peace talks. The fighting in Tigray has claimed thousands of lives since 2020 and left millions of people starving. Mediation efforts have struggled to make any progress. The United Nations is warning of a worsening humanitarian catastrophe in Ethiopia. On Friday, UNICEF said more than 100,000 children could face extreme starvation in the next year as a result of major fighting in that country's northern Tigray region. Now the world's worst hunger crisis in a decade. The pictures out of Tigray are heart-wrenching. Children in the streets, families in disarray, all under the threat of starvation. Yes. Food convoys have been barred from accessing the region. It's been over a month since the last one made its way through. Our worst fears about the health and well-being of children in that conflicted region of northern Ethiopia are being confirmed. At a press conference on Friday, UNICEF spokesperson Marikse Mercado said aid workers need unfettered access to prevent famine and assaults like the one she described on a young woman. She watched her grandmother get killed. She was raped by several men as she watched her nine-month-old baby being tossed around by other uh, men. Maybe a word about what is the aim of uh, Ethiopia. When I uh, met the Ethiopian leadership in February, they, they really used this kind of language that they, they are going to destroy the Tigrayans, they are going to wipe out the Tigrayans for 100 years and, and, and so forth, which, which for me referred to, to very serious uh, human rights uh, atrocities and crimes as, as well if you wipe out your your uh, national minority what is it it's uh, it, it, you cannot destroy all the people you cannot destroy uh, all the population in in, in Tigray and, and I think that's very obvious that uh, we, we have to react and and, uh, and because it looks for us like an ethnic cleansing it's a uh, it is a very very serious uh, uh, act if this is true. More than 40 churches have been destroyed. We know that in one massacre alone, 78 priests were killed in just one massacre. And there have been dozens and dozens of massacres that have happened in Tigray and mostly uh, at churches and on religious holidays. While Russia's invasion of Ukraine has captured global headlines, the world's deadliest conflict right now is taking place in Ethiopia. A group of leading researchers recently estimated that up to 500,000 people have been killed in a brutal civil war that began there just under two years ago. Orthodox Christians have been among its worst victims, intentionally targeted by Ethiopia's federal government, according to opposition leaders. Some even say it's a genocide. Take a look. Hundreds of thousands of people dead, millions more displaced, Christians persecuted, and foreign powers intervening and angling for influence. It sounds an awful lot like what happened in Syria during the height of that country's recent civil war. Yet it's unfolding right now, not in the Middle East, but in the Horn of Africa, where Ethiopia has been locked in a brutal civil war since November 2020. Foreign actors like Russia, Iran, Turkey, and China are supporting Ethiopia's federal government as they seek greater influence and warm water ports in the Red Sea region. The Biden administration, meanwhile, has attempted to mediate between the warring factions and has called for negotiations. The White House is concerned that the chaos in Ethiopia will spread throughout the region. Ethiopia is the second most populous country in Africa, with close to 120 million people. Its capital city, Addis Ababa, is the headquarters of the African Union. And although Ethiopia is one of the world's oldest Christian nations, American pulpits have been mostly silent about one of the worst humanitarian crises in recent memory.
We know that um, more than 40 churches have been destroyed. We know that in one massacre alone, 78 priests were killed in just one massacre. And there have been dozens and dozens of massacres that have happened in Tigray and mostly uh, at churches and on religious holidays. There's a church called St. Mary's Mariam Dingala Church where 20 Sunday school children were killed, 20. Malete Bahara Mascal is an Ethiopian American activist and business owner based in Denver who still has family in the northern region of Tigray, which has been targeted by the Ethiopian federal government. Tigray is over 95% Christian, mostly Orthodox, but with some evangelicals and Catholics as well. Where I'm from, my hometown in Aksum, Aksum is a very holy, sacred town. There was a massacre at St. Mary's Church there where more than 700 Tigrayans were killed on a religious holiday. The fighting began in November 2020, not long after Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed postponed parliamentary elections. Ahmed blamed COVID-19 for the decision. Yet the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, defied Ahmed and held regional elections anyway. Although Tigrayans make up only about 7% of Ethiopia's total population, the TPLF was in power for the better part of 30 years after helping to topple a communist military dictatorship that ruled Ethiopia during the 1970s and 80s. The TFLP eventually stepped aside in 2018 after widespread protests and Ahmed then came to power. Many Tigrayans believe that Ahmed launched the federal government's invasion of the region in late 2020 because he wants to weaken the TPLF's influence for good. He's used harsh measures to accomplish that alleged goal, including a blockade on food and any communication in and out of Tigray. You have referred to this as genocide, yet many people watching right now have probably not heard about this. What's going on in Ethiopia right now why do you think more people, especially Christians, the body of Christ around the world, are not aware of what's happening on the ground in Ethiopia right now? Ethiopia, which, by the way, is a Bible land mentioned many times in the Bible. First of all, there's a complete blackout on the region. All the services have been cut to the people of Tigray. More than 7 million people have not had access to their bank accounts for 19 months. They have not had running water in the state, no electricity, no uh, internet. So we're not able to get their stories. Global food shortages this summer have made the situation in Tigray even more dire. We're talking about 7 million people who don't have access to even food. When the soldiers, when the federal and federally aligned soldiers came into Tigray, they burned farmlands. Tigrayans are farmers. Their farmlands were burned. The prime minister will not allow food aid to come into Tigray. He will not allow fuel to come into Tigray. So recently, a little bit of food has crossed the border, the state border, but they won't, they can't distribute it because there's no fuel in Tigray. For Ethiopian Christians, this kind of hardship and persecution is nothing new. It's important to understand that persecution has always been part of being a Christian in Ethiopia. This is a country that formerly was under communist control. So if you talk to an, an old Ethiopian Christian, they will talk about the persecution that they faced under the communists. So persecution happening for them is, is not a new thing. It's not something that they're really shocked by. They really see it as part of following Jesus Christ. Of course, will be persecuted when we follow Christ. That's what he said would happen. Todd Nettleton is the chief of media relations and message integration for The Voice of the Martyrs, an organization that monitors Christian persecution around the world. He notes that Ethiopia is mentioned in the Bible dozens of times and that the country is said to have embraced Christianity as early as the fourth century. Ethiopians even say that they house the Ark of the Covenant at a church in Aksum, which is located in the beleaguered Tigray region. They trace their lineage back to the Queen of Sheba going to see King Solomon when he was in charge in Jerusalem, and they would trace their church lineage back to that. And in fact, uh, many of their teachings have brought forward some of the, the Jewish teachings from King Solomon's time. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has claimed to be an evangelical Christian who converted from Islam. He won a Nobel Peace Prize in 2018 for brokering peace with neighboring Eritrea after decades of hostilities. Now he's invited Eritrean troops into Ethiopia, where they've allegedly carried out massacres in Tigray. 
And Eritrea isn't the only foreign actor that's now involved in Ethiopia. This has become a proxy war of sorts. Abe Ahmed, the prime minister who you mentioned, he's invited in Eritrean troops, but also Turkey, Russia, China, all involved in the war in Ethiopia right now. Iran, Turkey, the UAE, China, all of these people provided military support in the form of drones, primarily in training on how to use drones. Russia and China have successfully blocked any conversation at the UN around these atrocious human rights abuses that are happening in Tigray. Bahara Mascal says control of the strategic Horn of Africa and the Red Sea is the goal. For example, Russia is currently building a military base in Eritrea. Who do you want to be influencing policy in the Horn if 12% of the world's trade is passing through the Red Sea? This is, real, this is an important question. Uh, the U.S. does not want to take a back seat to the Gulf states in this conversation. We need to be a part of that conversation. It matters to us economically. It matters to us as Christians uh, that this is a, a predominantly Christian state and all of this shared history is being destroyed. The Biden administration is now attempting to bring the Ethiopian federal government and representatives from Tigray to the negotiating table in an effort to end the fighting. Nettleton says the outcome for Christians in Ethiopia could have larger implications for the gospel in Africa. And they are also a mission-minded church that is sending out missionaries not only within their own country, but also into surrounding nations and across the continent of Africa. And so to see that church defeated would not only affect the nation of Ethiopia, it would affect the entire continent of Africa. We will continue to report on the plight of Ethiopian Christians and the persecuted church around the world. Hi, I'm Doug McElway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.
Amma nam ni kesa gali me nam kesa galu kabd. Amma warab, amma warab, benar. Amma sirit warab. Kesa kelung kau. Ansur kau bawa nak sasar. Murat ni. Nak kasih tu. Di jela mana anda? Ma. Alai. Enak dah. Lebih ni tak mas. Haram. Nanti ni. Bukan ada sejarah kita. Macam mana? Haram. Anak tarik. Bukan awak rabi saya. Inta anta. In. Nobel Peace Prize laureate waging full-scale ethnic genocide against Minoranos in Ethiopia. What is happening in Ethiopia's so-called Oromia region is a full-scale genocide of Minoranos like what happened in Rwanda's genocide against the Tutsi. If you are not familiar with what happened in Rwanda, please watch the film by the name Hotel Rwanda and compare what you see out there with the graphic footages that are coming from the so-called Oromia region of Ethiopia. The only difference between the genocide against the Tutsi and that of the genocide against the non-Oromos in the so-called Oromia region of Ethiopia is that the genocide being committed in Ethiopia by the Cairo against the non-Oromo ethnic groups is not being exposed and it is being covered up by the Ethiopian regime, led by an Oromo Prime Minister and his ignorant Ethiopianist sympathizers. If you watch the video footages of the genocide happening in Ethiopia, it is really sickening and simply beyond my forbearance to receive these kinds of news every day. What kind of person does that kind of cruelty to another human being? 
Nonoramos, especially Amparas and Gurujis, are being burned alive, slaughtered by machete, children were murdered, women were raped, their properties were vandalized and looted. What is even more mind-boggling is that the Oramo immigrants living in Europe and America have the audacity to come out, in the very country they are living in, to protest against Abby's regime. Not because Abby is doing too little to protect non-Oramo groups living in the region, but because his regime has started doing too little to stop the genociders after they did their damage. I am assuming, in their mind, they have the right to kill others. News channels such as Al Jazeera Euro International are airing their genocidal propaganda 24-7 and are playing a major role in fanning the genocide against the non oramas in Ethiopia. Niche sagam. Kesa kalung kau bu. Kau kau bini saya. Oromo people were absent from Ethiopian territory in medieval times before the 16th century, though their ancestors must have been multiplying in what is now a Somali country south of the Gulf of Aden, with their highly developed tribal organization characteristic institutions outgrew their living space and started migrating in a southwesterly direction towards the end of the 15th century. In the 16th century, taking advantage of the universal chaos following the Muslim wars, the war with Grang Ahmed's forces, the Oromos flooded into the southern marches of Ethiopia. As a result of this wholesale immigration, and in spite of the ferocious resistance of various Ethiopian monarchs, 
the Oromo came to occupy a great part of the plateau as far north as Walegga, Shoa, in the region of Harar. They also occupied with less difficulty large tracts of the intermediate levels, as for instance the escarpment region of Wallu, where they form a buffer community between the Amhara of the highlands and the Danakil of the desert. As Buxton and other authorities, both local and international, relate, the migration and expansion of the Oromo resulted in the genocide of a significant and massive number of the Amhara population and other indigenous people inhabiting the southern region. In Abba Bahari's chronic chronicles known as Zenahulagala, which is an eyewitness work dating to the 16th century by an orthodox monk, who records the massive and atrocious genocidal acts against the Amhara indigenous peoples, by the Oromo and their invasions of different regions. The director of archaeological research, Jean Dorres, also relates in his work entitled Ethiopia that the Oromo would sacrifice the Christian Amharas to idols in celebration of their victories of invasion. The emperor Yasu in one instance would avenge the Amharas which the Boran Oromo had invaded, captured and sacrificed to idols. The Amhara emperors and patriots dedicated their existence to the defense of their kingdom. The highly organized and ruthless invaders would destroy entire cities, massacre the people, loot every treasury, and labor to murder the emperor to conquer the kingdom. The emperors and patriots having to defend their nation against invaders, both progressing from the southern borders and Grand Ahmed's African and Arab forces, would retaliate at equal intensity. Having eventually regained control, the succeeding generations of invaders would ironically become the accusers of the Amhara, pleading to have been subjugated by them. Very few seem to know that the capital city of Gondor was founded as a fortress city by Emperor Fasiledos to secure the throne of the Emperor of Ethiopia and protect it from the southern invading Oromo by transferring it to the north to Gondor from Shawa. Fasiledos himself was born in Shoa, and his father Susnios, who was captured by the Oromo at 16 and lost his father at their hands while at war with them. The heir of the princes known as Zamena Masafant was a hundred years of the nation drowned in utter instability as a result of the constant wars with the expanding Oromos. It is indeed ironic that Amhara patriots are ever painted as subjugators, whereas it is they who have been pushed on their own land and their people who underwent an undiscussed genocide. Johann Ludwig Krapf Johann Ludwig Krapf, January 11, 1810, November 26, 1881, was a German missionary in East Africa, as well as an explorer, linguist, and traveler. Krapf played an important role in exploring East Africa with Johannes Rebmann. They were the first Europeans to see Mount Kenya with the help of Kikuyus who dwelled at its slopes in Kilimanjaro. Krapf also played a key role in exploring the East African coastline. Early Life Krapf was born into a Lutheran family of farmers in southwest Germany. From his school days onward he developed his gift for languages. He initially studied Latin, Greek, French, and Italian. More languages were to follow throughout his life. After finishing school he joined the Basel Mission Seminary at age 17 but discontinued his studies as he had doubts about his missionary vocation. He read theology at University of Tübingen and graduated in 1834. While working as an assistant village pastor, he met a Basel missionary who encouraged him to resume his missionary vocation. Ethiopia In 1836 he was invited by the Anglican Church Missionary Society CMS, to join their work in Ethiopia. Basel Mission seconded him to the Anglicans and from 1837 to 1842 he worked in this ancient Christian land. He prepared himself by learning ancient GEEZ and the Amharic language of the highlands. Landing at Tajura, Krapp followed the trade route to Shewa where he presented himself to its ruler, Marid Asmak Sal Selassie, and later accompanied the Marid Asmak on a military campaign in southern Shewa. Krapp's pietist background did not help him much to understand and appreciate traditional Ethiopian Christianity, especially their emphasis on saints, liturgy and use of GEEZ, a language no longer spoken. When he departed Shewa in 1842, he found his way to Gondar blocked by the aftermath of the Battle of Debre Tabor, retraced his steps to the court of Adarabil, a chieftain of the Vulu Amhara who then robbed him. Krapf managed to effect his escape with his servants, 
and made his way to Misawa supported by the reluctant charity of the local inhabitants. Thus he centered his interest on the Oromo people of southern Ethiopia, in his time known as the Gala, who then were largely believers in a traditional religion. He learned their language and started translating parts of the New Testament into it. While 1842 saw Krapf receive a doctorate from University of Tübingen for his research into the Ethiopian languages, it also witnessed the expulsion of all Western missionaries from Ethiopia, which ended his work there. In association with his colleague, Carl Wilhelm Eisenberg, he published a memoir of his time in Ethiopia, Journals of Eisenberg and Krapf in 1843. He revised Abu Rami's Bible translations into Amharic for BFBS. Kenya Krapf spent some time in Alexandria, Egypt, where he married. From there he set off for East Africa hoping to reach the Oromo from what is now the Kenyan coast. Most of the East African coastline was then part of the Zanzibar Sultanate. Telekafas home in Taragual. Yan Kagzio Garna Huneta, Sumo de Lubona Tomad Suntanilal, Rgatayan in a Groch Bamulu Baker Bexentanilal. Ihin in the Politica, Messus of Wachal. Abi or Romos Lahona, Loromo at Dalal below, here we Mangusumulo Messus of Wachal. Kaziasta Kashkin, Tanantin Emperor, Yoromo, Yelainet, Yemetai Lemuidan Shu. Oromo chumi in Savralin, in Belalin, in Gelalin, Bejachenega Bounsult and Laman Masalifan Ansetum, Yamilo, Yatakalai Ministru, Yoromina Quanqua, Yabaligo Banigur, Lelaik and Efecheli Low, Gilt Melek to Monu, Soyo, Bahulet Quanqua like Yetamasa Rete, Talawach Man in Natandala Chokamasa Yetuchi, and Dutch Talawach Makinatli Kerbe Betachilum. Kazi Batach Tatarkumek Arabo, Yataklai Ministru, Yoromingan Gur, Taranginet, Kimanginet and Nasilt and Nafak in Net and Kama Galet Bezelle, Auntau Itruguami in Oral Tablu, Mitasa by the Lem. Betaman Gustachin and Matachulamait, Dilalaginia to Sawuch, Ka President Tachugar Tamakaruna, Kagada Batochgar Tamakaruna, Matachut, Betaman Gustachin Baleni Meslat. Bale betaman gustachin ani maslal. Sala betaman gustachin maurat im malfel go oromo sar chasayal. Maurat adis abai silone yhen adis abai wede thul d master alif sala malfel g sar tan masayetam fel galen. Aun dagmo gizellen wari bak anal makafafeli bak anal mabalati bak anal. Nda bale an dhonen yhen kol la ma bo thagan natargan laziyat agaluthen. Dim Madola Bulai Tanagar Rualo, Balin Melawet, Merit Lai Chasaihun, Gennetustum, Samato Chachuni Mias de Sitzelone, Yen Merit and Lavut Allen, Yen Merit and Lavut Allen, Yen Merit and Lavut Allen, Collachin Gennetional, Keroachin Balas Raihunal, Dennet Tari Kional, And Natachin Itana Karal, Andachin Landachin Gulbetonen, Ethiopian Bichasaihun, African and Meralen. Selezi, Exiab Herisat and an Amru, Exiab Herisat and an Amru Tatakman, Betagbar Bemitaisra, Hagar Kagiran, Yoromon Hizbela Makrat, Beli Yukorat and Net, Late Tak and Yasarania Len Bamonu, Beduatra Tursun, Nya Exiab Heril Lembelen, Barasachin Alamet and Emin Kurara Midalen, Exiab Herin and Nam Nalen, Behizben Nam Nalen, Beduan Nam Nalen. Kazba Chingar, Ejule Jetaisen, Hagarachin in Lavut Allen. Balla Fomet, Guinea Rust Sundaitanal. Lamecho Amet de Gmo, Yen Sran Allen. En Met Allen, En Tayak Allen. En Nashen Fallen, En Shagar Allen, En Nashagar Allen. Liak Omeni Michelman Minurum. Zarin de Midakwa, Wedihina, Wedia Yerot Emi Waracho Nikerna, 
27 አመት የበላችንን ወያን እንኳን በልተና ባረናታል ኦሮሞ እስኪ ነቃ ነው እንጂ እስኪ ነሳ ነው እንጂ ሲነሳ ሚዳቋ አትበላን እኛ ዙሁንን እንሰብራለን እንበላለን እንገዛለን ሐሳባለን ድርጅታለን ከአለም ጋር ግንኙነታለን ህዝባችን በስራ ያውቀናል እኛም ህዝባችንን እናውቃለን ሽማግሌዎቻችንን እናውቃለን ታይዘን መላውን አፍሪካን ለመለወጥ ይሄ ዘመን የኛ ስለሆነ ይህን ዘመን የሰጠን እግዚአብሔር በመሆኑ አሳልፈን ሰጠን ዳግም ወደ ባርነት ለመመለስ አንፈልግም ያ ደግሞ ተመልሶ አይመጣም እጃቸው የገባውን ነገር ጠብቁ ቆጥቡ አጠንክሩ ጉድለት ወይም ስተት ካለ ምከሩ